Hello and welcome back to the XABC Support Channel. I'm Brother Billy and we appreciate you for checking out this video. In our recent content, we decided to take a closer look at the teachings of G. Craig Lewis regarding women. We've not only found these teachings to be false, but we've also expressed our concerns about the culture at ABC. Now, on our last video, I mentioned that we would review other false teachings that G. Craig Lewis has made concerning women. But before we do that, I'd like to make a few disclaimers. Number one, we are not pastors. While our opinions are that of concerned brothers in the faith, our authority begins and ends with pointing you to the scriptures. That said, if you find yourself in a difficult situation with your spouse, family members, or even church leadership, we are going to encourage you to find a biblically sound church with a qualified pastor or a biblical counselor. We say this because we understand that some of your situations are beyond our scope of support. We also recognize that ABC leadership is not qualified to handle these matters. Now, that's been substantiated by scripture as well as the testimony of many others. We also understand that the leadership should refrain, or we agree that the leadership should refrain from doing so, that being counseling. But we understand, obviously, this is not going to happen. So to those watching this video, consider this a warning. Number two, I'd like to reiterate the fact that we agree with the doctrine of biblical headship being the responsibility of the man. We spoke on this in our last video, but because we're continuing the subject, I'd like to state this again. Many will see these videos and make the assumption that for some reason or somehow they believe we're advocating for women-led homes. God forbid, okay? Now, Peter lays out the responsibilities in regards to submission in 1 Peter chapter 3, 3 verse 7. But I'd like to read an excerpt from gotquestions.org on the subject. Okay, so I wrote in the subject line, what does it mean that women are the weaker vessel? In 1 Peter 3 and 7 is, of course, the scripture that's highlighted. I'll read. The context of 1 Peter 3 and 7 is the Apostle Peter's instructions concerning living as godly believers toward one another, beginning in the home. It's highlighted in 1 Peter 3, verses 1 through 12. That's the pretty much the summation or the subject, the summary of it. The wife is addressed first and then the husband. This is the same order the Apostle Paul uses in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 33. The husband is to dwell with his wife according to knowledge, giving her honor as the weaker vessel. The word dwell is in the imperative and has the idea of standing beside, dwelling with, in a presiding position. In other words, the husband is to take his place as the head according to God's order. The word knowledge in 1 Peter 3 and 7 can be translated as understanding. Both men and women have difficulty understanding their spouses. It takes commitment and surrender to God's order on the part of both partners to come to a place of true understanding. Understanding is the basis for seeing one's wife as a vessel to honor, respect, and care for because she is weaker. This is not a popular idea among many women or even many men. However, the scripture tells us that the woman was deceived, she is subject to her husband, and that she's a weaker vessel. That women are usually physically weaker is undeniable, but the implication of the fall is that by virtue of her being deceived by Satan, women may also sometimes be weaker in other ways. That definitely does not mean that she is less valuable or that she does not have equal access to grace. Rather, it is a basis for a husband to treat his wife with understanding, tenderness, and patience. Now, for the entire article, I have really read an excerpt of it, but for the entire article, I'm going to place that in the description of this video. Okay, now disclaimer number three, number three, please understand. The brothers and I have heard from many families since leaving ABC. We've heard testimony after heartbreaking testimony. And we're doing our best to warn the body of Christ, according to Ephesians 5 and 11. Please continue to keep us in prayer as we do so, as we rightly divide God's word for his glory. Now, not everything you hear will be pleasant. Not everything we say will be easy to understand, but it is necessary to speak. Again, I want to remind you, we're in a process of exercising our ecclesiastical moment or our time to speak. If you recall in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, verse 7, it says there's a time to speak and there's a time to be silent. We can no longer be silent on these issues, church. 
This is why the brothers and I are speaking out. Far too many families have been abused and abandoned. Far too many families have had their faith shipwrecked by these false teachings. Far too many young people are being influenced with, by, to rule with iron fists, not considering their wives or children in the process, all because G. Craig says so. Now, I like to take a moment to pose some questions. And as Brother Anthony would say, this is food for thought. Now, to the brothers, are you honoring God in the treatment of your spouse according to the word? Of course, we read 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. And when you found your wife, did you believe you found a good thing? Or do you believe the only good thing that she can do is procreate? Now, some of your wives may have been better financially uh, before you arrived at ABC. Now, all of a sudden, you're there and she's no longer capable or worthy of your consideration because you ask her an opinion on a matter and all of a sudden that makes her an advisor over you. I think uh, that's a little extra, a little far-fetched. We also have to understand we need to balance the conversation here. And I think that's something that is not done, a, a not very good job is done of that oftentimes. Now, before we get into the clip, I'd like to leave you with the words of Jesus in Mark chapter 10, verses 5 through 9. Now, of course, if you recall, in this particular passage, uh, Jesus is having a discussion with the Pharisees. They've questioned him about divorce, and there's subject, uh, a discussion on the matter. And of course, this is very controversial. But I'd like to highlight a portion of the scripture here. And I'll, of course, you'll understand what I'm trying to highlight at this point uh, when we get there. And Jesus answered and said to them, because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. And I say that because that's what's happening here. When brothers and sisters or husband and wife are hearing these messages, they're, they're being separated in some in cases, a lot of cases. In this case, these false teachings are creating a, a, a feeling of angst or disappointment or even depression in, in the spouses. And if the men hear this message and they accept the message and then the spouse may have a question or may disagree with a, a statement or may have a question about something else not even pertaining to the message, all of a sudden, the woman is a Jezzy, and we've heard this as many times, and that's what I'm talking about. You all should be able to agree and be able to come together and have an agreement as opposed to being at odds all the time. And I think that's what happens with these teachings that create this discourse or this division, and that is a very challenging issue in a home, especially a home that G. Craig is running. Brothers and sisters, while there are real threats to marriage and the authority of the man, through various agendas of the enemy, we should not allow this to cause us to resort to the other extreme, which of course is the teachings of G. Craig Lewis. Honor God by honoring your spouse. Dwell with her with understanding. And when you have questions, please, please seek a biblically qualified pastor for wisdom and advice. And might I add a biblical counselor. God bless you. And please let us know what you think in the comments. I yeah. mean, that's just a, a new low for G. Craig Lewis. So let me just start by recapping. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I just want to refute these false teachings that he has piled up on women. And, and the women who have been at his church, you know, I, I pray for you ladies. I pray y'all are here, healed from that. And, and the women who are there, I pray that y'all get out of there. Because this is what you, your daughters, your mothers, this is what this is what you've been learning from G. Craig Lewis or what he's been putting on you. Number one, he's told you that God does not hear your prayers, women. If you're a married woman, God does not hear your prayers. I heard him say that with my own ears. I have witnesses to that. That is a lie. First Samuel tells us otherwise. Number two, he says, the women don't need, uh, this is my comment. I said, women don't need to be uh, put in their place. In other words, women don't need to be put in check. You ain't got your woman checked. You ain't put her in check. They're not dogs, sir. 
That is G. Craig Lewis's mantra. He has said that on many occasions. Brother Anthony, you got something? No, no, no. I'm just oh. chuckling that. <laughs> okay. I mean, he, he, he likes to say that. You ain't got your woman in check? That is ridiculous. Well, They're not well, dogs, well, sir. Well, I gotta, I gotta be honest. That that's, and I don't know if you knew this, Kevin. That's a, that's a from a movie. That line is from a movie, The Five Heartbeats, when Eddie King Jr. Oh Lord, another that. movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <Isn't that? laughs> you, you ain't got your woman to check, Eddie. That, that was, that was. Uh, well, that that, that sounds that like part. G. Craig. Oh my goodness. Well, well, again, continuing to refute the lies that he has heaped on women. Women are made, made in the image and likeness of God, not man, G. Craig. I'm going to I want to revisit that in just a moment. Yes. Women should not follow their husbands to hell. G. Craig Lewis teaches the women that you should be like a Jezebel. As Brother Anthony said, Jezebel is ride or die. G. Craig Lewis teaches that if your husband is riding with the devil, then you need, no. I'm sorry. If your husband is down with the devil, then you need to be down with the devil, too. This is G. Craig Lewis's teaching. We have witnesses to that. It goes back as late as uh, 2012. And so he's teaching women to be Jezebels, but the Bible teaches you to be completely opposite. The Bible teaches you to be, let your chase and pure behavior win your husband. Let him, you win your husband without a word by what? By your chase and, and, and uh, pure behavior, not your devilish behavior. Because if he's acting like a devil, you're supposed to act like a devil. Women are not supposed to do that, sir. You're degrading women. Once again, also, the purpose of women is, is greater than them having babies, G. Craig Lewis. You know, oh, look between your legs. That's your purpose, women. That's what G. Craig Lewis teaches women. And so he doesn't realize that it's to worship God in spirit and in truth. It's not just about a physical baby because some women can't have babies. Some women can have babies, but they don't have a husband that would be the proper husband for that child. Some women can have babies, but they know they're not ready to have babies. And so for you to just say, oh, you ain't walking in your purpose because you ain't having a baby. So first of all, that's none of your business. Mm. Second of all, that's a lie. Women are more than just what their, uh, their, their body parts are telling them. You know, he implies women are worthless if they're not having children. And that, that's a flat out lie. You know, Dr. Tony Evans says, whatever God called you to do, he will give, it will give God greater glory and it will expand his kingdom in history. Again, whatever God called you to do, it's going to give him glory and it's going to expand his kingdom. And so that, that goes beyond just having children. And so to, and that's Romans eleven thirty six. So speaking, speaking on these lies on women, he, he assaults women with his teaching. He batters women. These men are sitting in there, letting their, their wives get battered and, and harassed and harangued. Uh, and their brain twisted like a pretzel. It is, it is a shame before God. But I want to go to this. Women are made in the image and likeness of God very quickly, brothers, because this, brother. this thing is disgusting. Yeah, it is. And so, you know, I, so he, he kind of goes into this. Okay, Adam was made in the image of likeness of, of God, according to G. Craig Lewis, because Adam, God took the dust of the, the, uh, the ground and breathed his spirit into Adam. Okay, then G. Craig Lewis says, well, woman was made differently. And then he says, because she was made differently, she was taken out of man. In other words, she was extracted out of man. So anyone, I'm, I'm drawing conclusions. So anyone who is extracted out of man is not made in God's image. Wait a minute. I was extracted from a woman. Am I not made in the image and likeness of God? As a matter of fact, everyone after, um, after Adam was extracted from, from a woman, either she was extracted from a man, but the rest of us were extracted from a woman. So, G. Craig Lewis, based on your own logic, sir, you're telling us that if you're extracted from another human being on earth, you're not made in the image and likeness of God. You're made in the image and likeness of the person you're extracted from. So that means that all of humanity outside of, of Adam and Eve, that means all of us brothers are made in the image of woman because that's where we came from. Mm. Or man. Or man, G. Craig because, Lewis. Yeah, you you type of teaching before people, and then he sets people up. Did you notice, brothers? He kind of goes into the scripture and he says Adam was made this way, Eve was made different. Can I get an amen? I mean, do we agree there? It was a setup because now he's going to twist the scriptures, and that's exactly what he did. So, in closing, brothers, um, this extraction process, this birth, G. Craig Lewis talks about because she was taken out of man. She, she no longer qualifies for the image and likeness of God. 
it is um, it's just another slap in the face toward women and the glory that God has given women. And he and because of his sexual deviant behavior, and I got to go there, I'm just going to have to go there because of his sexual deviant behavior. It speaks very clearly that he has a problem, an unnatural problem with women. Mm. I've already gone over his false teaching about women. Now, let me go over his sexual charges that are levied against him. Mm. 20 years of being in a sexual relationship with a woman that sits on the front row in your church, G. Craig Lewis. How do I know your cousin has pictures of this woman in very inappropriate pictures of her on your laptop and you won't answer any questions? G. Craig Lewis, we also have a sister, Sister LaDonna Jackson, came out and said in 2011 that you were in a relationship with her for one year. Sir, we also have testimony that Seiko has given testimony that there are prostitutes. There was a prostitute that came out and actually said you had a sexual inappropriate relationship with her. We also have a testimony, sir, that you actually showed your genitals to one of the people in your church. We have a testimony of that, sir. We also have a testimony, sir, that you have actually, you've soiled, I'm going to call it soiled. You have soiled a single women in your church. You, you've, 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 uh, you've played like, you've just done inappropriate things with these single women in your church. You fool around with them. And once you're done with them, you find them a husband and then you get them married. And then it's your little dirty secret that you keep from this, this man who just married this woman, who's unbeknownst that you were fooling around with this woman before you found her for him. Okay, we have a testimony of that, sir. Okay, and that's, I can only imagine that's the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And so we're looking at your false teachings and how you degrade and demoralize and de-glorify women. We already talked about that in the scriptures. Now we're talking about your sexual deviant behavior in God's house. I'm not talking about on the corner in a club, sir. I'm talking about you are in the church doing this mess. And so, you know, this is the type of this is the type of man that's that's living and breathing and walking up and down the aisles around your children at ABC. I don't know what y'all got going on, but I mean, for me, I'm like, no. If he don't want to answer no questions, I gotta I gotta bounce. This guy's out of control. Hmm.